So in the series of learning C programming from this video I am going to start recursion in C. This is very important topic in C and generally in gate exam you know uh, you find questions on recursion right and uh, during interview also they used to ask question from this topic and you can say it's a little bit tricky or you can say tough for the beginners for the students who are you know beginners in a programming language who are beginners in C language they will find this topic very tough but it's not like that. If you got what is recursion the basics and how you are going to solve the programs which are using recursion the process you will definitely say that it's not that tough right. So, we will discuss everything about recursion in this video we will see what is recursion and we will see a simple program using recursion right. But there are many things about recursion like types of recursion direct and indirect tailed and you know known tailed advantages of recursion drawbacks of recursion why we use recursion and some problems also everything we will discuss recursion from the basics right one by one in later videos. So, this video is like introduction to recursion. Now, let us discuss what is recursion in C. First of all what is recursion? It is simple when a function call itself then it is called recursion. See we have discussed like this is main function and here we are calling a function suppose add we have one function add we are calling this function here right and here we have suppose uh, you know add and the definition of this function. And before we have prototype like void add something this kind of thing. So, this is what function calling this function we are calling in main function right. So, this is what calling function this is what called function, but but if I write something like this I am writing void add this is I am writing suppose definition of the function here I am writing some code and in this function itself here also I am writing some code. This is what function calling I hope you know the syntax of you remember the syntax of function calling. So, this is what function calling and where we are calling this function add the same the same function. So, the same function is calling itself means this function is calling itself this process is called recursion right and this the function can call itself directly or indirectly that is why types of recursion comes direct recursion indirect recursion tailed recursion non tailed recursion that we will discuss in next video right. This is like simple introduction to recursion. So, recursion is what when a function call itself directly or indirectly that thing is called recursion that process is called recursion that is it. And this this function is called recursive function the function which is calling itself this function is called recursive function that is it. I hope you got the difference now here we are calling in main this function, but here this function is calling itself. So, this is called recursion, this is not recursion, this is simple function calling, this is recursion, right. Like suppose uh, let us take a simple example. Suppose in my, in my class I have a student uh, having name Rahul. So, I am calling Rahul like Rahul, but Rahul is not responding. Again, I will call Rahul, this time also Rahul did not listen and he is not responding. Again, I call Rahul and this time Rahul responded, yes, ma'am. So, now like suppose I am one function Rahul is another function. So, I am calling Rahul and when Rahul will respond just stop that is it right. But suppose I am calling myself. So, in the previous case the termination condition was when Rahul will come to me I will stop calling Rahul right. And suppose I have called Rahul three times and after that Rahul came to me and I have stopped calling Rahul. But I am myself calling like Jenny. I am also Jenny, I am Jenny and I am calling Jenny itself. So, I am Jenny only, so how Jenny will come? Like I am calling Jenny, but I am Jenny only. So, you know how Jenny will come to me? So, when I am going to stop calling Jenny, I am calling Jenny, 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 but Jenny is not coming because I myself is you know Jenny. So, I am myself calling, you know I am calling myself, so this is what recursion, but now Jenny is not coming. So, I am calling Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. So, this would be an infinite loop when I have to stop. So, this thing is very important when the recursion have to stop the termination condition or the base condition in the recursion. This thing is very, very, very important the base condition or the termination condition. So, here I can you know put a condition like after calling Jenny 5 times I will stop. So, I will call Jenny 5 times Jenny, 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 Jenny and now I will stop. 
So, that is what the base condition when you have to stop the recursion that is the base condition that is the termination condition of recursion and if you will not put that base condition properly then your program would be an infin in infinite loop. Maybe it will show some runtime you know exception or infinite loop or undefined behavior it will show. So, you have to put the base condition very 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 carefully. This thing is very important when you are writing a program using recursion the base condition. See let us take the, the, this example if I am writing a program of uh, you know finding factorial of a number. So, I hope you know if I write 5 factorial 5 factorial means how to find 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is equal to 120 right. So, 5 factorial what I can write 5 into 4 factorial that is also fine right. 4 factorial what you can write 4 into 3 factorial that is also right. Again I can write 3 factorial I can write 3 into 2 factorial that is also right. 2 factorial I can write 2 into 1 factorial that is also right. Right? Now 1 factorial is 1 or again I can write 1 1 equal to uh, sorry 1 into 0 factorial 1 factorial you can write 1 into 0 factorial right. So, ultimately it means n into n minus 1 factorial right n is 5. So, n into n minus 1 factorial this is what I am doing and again suppose here I am again 0 factorial means 0 into minus 1 factorial then minus 1 into minus 2 factorial and the, again it is going on. If you will not put the termination condition you have to identify where you have to stop where you, you are going to stop when when here or here also you can stop when n becomes 0 right because 0 factorial we know it is 1 0 factorial means 1. Now you have to stop we will not move forward further we are not going to move here we are going to stop right or you can stop here like if n you can also put this condition if n is equal to is equal to 0 means stop. Now 0 factorial means 1. So, from here obviously what we will do we, will, we are going to return back. So, we are we are going to multiply this 1 then this 2 then this 3 then this 4 then this 5 and ultimately we will get answer 120. So, we are moving forward as well as after finding the base condition termination condition in the same process we have to move backward like this like this and from where you have started there you will have to stop now and after that you will get the result. So, what is the process behind recursion means we are finally you know you can say dividing a problem into smaller one we have divided this 5 factorial into 5 into 4 factorial the smaller problem the 4 factorial is 3 into 4 into 3 factorial now the smaller one because 4 factorial then 3 factorial this is smaller one then again we have divided this problem right and add some we have added some base condition right and that is it that is what recursion right. So, here this thing is very important where you have to stop otherwise you will go forward and that would be an infinite loop maybe the stack overflow, overflow problem you will get generally you will get stack overflow pr problem when you are writing pro you know programs using recursion because you do not put the right condition the base condition the termination condition here the termination condition is n is equal to is equal to 0 you have to stop or more precisely I can say if n become less than equal to 1 then stop. If n is 1 here also you can stop because 1 factorial is also 1. So, no need to move further right here also you can stop and you can move backward like you can multiply 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 that is it right. So, that is you can say this is the base condition. So, here if if I put a condition n is equal to is equal to 10 the termination condition by default I have put n is equal to is equal to 10 then you have to stop and I am finding factorial of 5. So, is there any chance of getting n is equal to 10 in this process? No. So, ultimately you will move forward 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 and this would be an infinite loop. 
this condition you will never reach to this termination condition right and in this case you will find you, you can find out the error like stack overflow problem because every time you are going to call this function the memory would be allocated right and sometimes the memory would be exhausted the stack memory would be exhausted obviously out of you will you know run out of memory so at that time you will find the error stack overflow problem right so you have to put this termination condition very carefully in recursive, in, in recursive programs so i hope i guess you got the idea about recursion right basic idea a function calling itself directly or indirectly that thing is known as recursion in c right so let's take a simple example and we will see what kind of output you will get when you will run that program so now this is the you know simple program of recursion why recursion see we are having a function display and in this function only i am calling display again so this is what function calling itself directly right so now how it will execute it will it will be executed and what it will print the process behind recursion see you have to follow the steps only you have to understand this process very carefully if you got the process of executing the program having recursion recursion would be like it's very simple for you so now first of all the control will go to the main function so now from the stack memory one stack frame or activation record of that function would be you know uh, hold in that memory so one stack frame would be allocated to this main uh, let's say here this is from the stack memory here we have main one frame for main so here what would be stored whatever the local variables here that would be allocated here right now here we have n is equal to 3 and many more things also right like uh, you know uh, from where this function has been called and what function it is calling many things it is going to store but here for the simplicity purpose i am just going to record here the local variable so here we have n so we have n and n is equal to 3 so now next statement is display we are calling sorry display n obviously we are passing n you can pass 3 also but here i am passing variable so what value would be passed 3 right so now here from here it is calling display so means for display also one frame would be allocated the activation record for this display also would be stored here in the stack so memory would be allocated obviously when you are going to call this function so this is what for display but here for display n3 for display 3 because anyway here we have n3 so in this display function we have a local variable the copy of these variables no these variables would also be allocated some memory n is equal to here we have 3 because 3 would be passed check the condition n less than 1 no this condition is not true so else part in else part we have three statements so this thing you have to you know uh, uh, check very carefully here we have three statements so first is printf so first we have printf so this printf will print what n so n value here is 3 so it will print 3 on the screen it will print 3 now next statement is display here we have display n minus 1 n minus 1 means 3 minus 1 that is 2 so here we are going to pass 2 and again it is going to call display itself so when it is going to call itself obviously above this one one more frame would be allocated to this function every time the function would call itself one frame would be allocated to that and these variables the local variables the the copy of the local variables would be here so here this display we are calling but here we have n2 this is for display 2 right because from here we are passing to n minus 1 2 so here we have n but in this n we have 2 right check the condition if n less than 1 not true we are going to into we are going to enter into else part in else part again we have three statements see here here also we have one more statement printf n but this statement is still pending we haven't executed this printf we have executed this printf only because before this we are calling this function so still this is going to be executed when i'll tell you so now here we are calling display one printf is there which is printing n so it will print 2 so in the on the screen it will print 2 
Now again next statement is display. What we are passing n minus 1, n is 2, so we are passing 1. So and this printf is state still pending. Whatever is pending, I am putting that into rectangle. So display 1, so we are going to call the display 1. So again one frame would be allocated to display 1. This is for display 1. Here we have n, n is 1. So less than 1, no. In else part, we have three statement. One is printf, it will print n, that is 1. So it will print 1 on the screen. Again we will call display. Display 1 minus 1, that is 0. And here also we have one more printf which is pending, this printf. So display 0 means again for display 0 we have this frame, display 0 would be passed. But this time check the condition n less than 1, yes condition true. So here we have n 0, this condition true, now return, we are not going to enter to else part, return, return is where, simply this is return, return means where the control will go the function which are calling this and from where we are calling this function display 0 from display 1 from here we are calling right this process you need to take care when you are moving backward so this is the base condition now you have to move backward in the same direction so now return back so from here we are going to return back to here I hope you can see this yeah from here we are going to return back to here display 0. Is there any statement after display 0? Yes, we have this statement printf n. So what it will print in this in this stack frame, what is the value of n? One, n 1. So again it will print 1. Right? And after printing, just closing of else and after this closing of this function. Right? After closing of this function obviously the control will return but where it will return from where you are calling this function from where you are calling this display 1 this is display 1 so from where you are calling this display 1 from display 2 here so it will return the control here right now in display 1 also still we have one statement which is still you know going to be executed so printf n what is the value of n here 2 in this frame 2 so it will print again 2 after that the control will return where from where you are calling this display 2 from display 3 so here we are going to return because here we are calling display 2 again this printf will print n 3 right and from where you are calling this display 3 from the main function so now after printing this we have returned to main and just exit from the main and that's it so this would be printed so this is the process of recursion i hope you go to this is very simple you have to just maintain the stack frame that's it in the moving direction in the backward direction the same direction you will move if you will not you are not going to maintain this one this is you know time you know lengthy process so while writing gate exam or any competitive exam in that case obviously we cannot maintain this kind of thing so a simple method is also there that we will discuss in a next video with one more example properly right so whatever the you know extra things like the types of recursion and advantage, advantages and drawbacks of recursion that we will see in the next video so i hope you got the basics about recursion so now i'll see in the next video till then bye bye take care